Hello, YouTube community. My name is TheJackEmba13. We're back with some more, if my heart had wings. Last time, we found out that Kodori, wheelchair girl, was trying to withdraw from school. We don't quite know why just yet, and we don't know why, but the letter that she had for withdrawal is now within our possession, and we don't want her to know that. We're not entirely certain why we're withholding it from her, but we don't want her to withdraw just yet. We're trying to find a, uh, a better way about it. Perhaps it's a little bit selfish of us and not really our job, but uh, as dorm mother, I think that it's at least a little bit of responsibility to look after the people that live in the dorm, and especially people who you know seem to have a little bit of difficulty doing things on their own. She's had issues in the past with you know getting stuck in places and not quite knowing exactly how to counter arguments, so perhaps she does need some help. Don't quite know. Anyway, Ageha, our childhood friend, uh, has called us, so let's go ahead and repeat what she said. Thank you. Early in the morning, the doorbell chimed, so I went to open it, and there stood Ageha. What are you doing here? She remarked as she saw me wearing an apron. What, did you not believe me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Ageha focused on the words student dormitory, as if questioning their suitability, as she gazed at the magnificent entrance. Yeah, I was surprised too, to think that I would become the caretaker of the place that we used to sneak into when we were kids. I think that meant to say I might like to live here, so another typo. Has to be one every episode, you know. Oh my god. You can't say stuff like that, you're making me blush. Why did you come here? I asked while guessing that perhaps she had come to invite me to walk to school with her. She is, after all, my number one best friend. Eh, I wouldn't quite say that. I think Mabo is my best friend, but I'm not Aoi, so like I don't want to speak for him. Oh, dagger to the heart. I was wrong. Miss Alul? No, it's it's nothing. <laughs> While blushing due to the misunderstanding, I looked back towards Kodori's room. Looks like she still hasn't woken up yet. Even if she gets up now and takes her time eating breakfast, she can still make it with time to spare. Fair enough, you do you. I'll just, you know, walk to school alone. There's still some left. You're choking, right? I only gave you a little bit. Oh, yeah, I guess. Kind of ate the whole thing again this morning, though. How was the taste, at least? Really? With good food, it tastes good no matter how much you eat. An unrefined palate? The shock hit me like a bolt of lightning. I'm surprised that she's more shocked about that than the fact that she didn't want to go walking to school with you. You consider her your number one best friend, and she's just like, yeah, I want to talk to this one girl that you mentioned that I seem to not very like know very well. Like what? <laughs> anyway. I hung my head in dismay. The truth is Agiha had revealed the reason why, since yesterday, the boarders hadn't been eating my cooking properly. I thought I'd ask her opinion, which is why I made Agiha some food and got her to eat it. It's made from leftover ingredients anyway. Yeah, 
yeah, I think that's a, a bit much for the morning. I mean, it's probably more of a midday type of thing. That's interesting. Never really thought about tomato sauce-based pasta for breakfast. Hmm. Cooking for girls is so difficult. It's not really. You just ask what they want and, like, cook it. You're obviously, like, decent at cooking, but, like, you, you got this. You know? I mean, I make manicotti. Like, that's just a simple dish. You just fill the manicotti up, put it in a dish, put on some sauce that you want to have on it, maybe some cheese. Boom. You're, you're done. Like, it's pretty simple stuff. Tastes pretty good, too. And, and like, girls like it. At least a few that I've given it to. I've liked it. Boy or girl, we're all human. Tasty is tasty, right? That's what I believed, at least. Just as I was seriously troubled by this, I heard the squeaking of turning wheels coming from down the hallway. First, Hat the Duck came into the dining hall. Then, Kodre came in after him. It's the opposite to usual. <laughs> That yawn was really cute. Kodori rubbed her sleepy eyes and started preparing Hat's food. It somehow looked as if it was... Sorry. It somehow looked as if the hungry Hat had woken her up. You better not eat my Hat. I mean, I hope she wouldn't eat the Hat, but also don't eat Hat the Duck. <laughs> the voice actor or voice actress for Hat is... Probably just had a lot of fun doing the voice, because that's just, it's great. Not understanding her words, Hat quacks happily as Kodori speaks to him and eats his food. <laughs> Kodori notices that Agiha is here and instantly opens up her eyes. Kodra gave a humph, made another one of those straight faces she's so good at. Oh, should I skip past the Komenasai? My apologies. Let me actually go back. Um, let me double check the shortcut for that. Yeah, I guess I just can't go back. Anyway, she's just a Komenasai. Uh, to say that she was... Anyway. You guys read it, probably. Hopefully. I think you, think you got the gist of it. I'm skipping by too quickly. I'm trying to have it be like a, a dialogue between the two and keep it more fluid. Apologize for, for the mix-ups there. We'll get that through. Oh wait, there's a log. Hold up. This is so slow. Let's not do it that way. It's either too slow or too fast. Like, it doesn't... Anyway, whatever. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> Kodori said with a straight face, then turned her wheelchair around. Just as she was about to leave, she stopped the wheelchair and turned around again. Uh huh? Yeah, we're childhood friends. <laughs> oh my god. Looks like she has even more of a bad attitude this morning. 
However, she did say she was going to go to school. After tidying up the breakfast things, I left the door hot. I left the door hot with Agatormi. <laughs> I couldn't even do the, the messed up version of it. I left the dormitory with Ageha. <laughs> On our way to school, somehow our conversation turned to Kotori. Is there a reason why Kotori stopped coming to school? I mean, I would, I would hope so. It's so like Agi how to worry about that sort of thing. If there are any people who don't really fit into the group or are left out, she just won't ignore them. In the past, that's why she started to play with Mabo, so it could have been for the same reason. Yeah, I can imagine that somehow. If you're hearing any buzzing vibrations, it's my phone, I'm getting messages. Don't worry about it, it's all good. Catch those at the end of the episode. Why? When Agiha reminded herself of what happened back then, she wearily slouched forward. Agiha is cheerful and has many friends. Kodoro, Kotori, who doesn't respond to Agiha's concerns about her, might have been seen as the one in the wrong by those around them. Since then, she stopped coming to school? Agiha is waving her arms around like someone from a kung fu movie and passionately tells the story. I decided not to ask her what kind of heroic deeds took places, or for any specific details. Anyway, <laughs> you all know what I'm looking at. Well, I didn't expect that. Even just by saying something in a slightly harsh way, she gets all tearful. Hmm? The only reason I could think of it is that it might be because it has full, dis full disabled access. In fact, that probably could be the main reason. Okay, Agaha, you're moving up in the world. I'm, I'm really starting to like this. The caring for others and having this can-do attitude. It's pretty nice. I can't wait until I find out the tragic backstory behind you that makes me cry. Because, you know, that's definitely going to come. Because <laughs> it's a visual novel and that's what they do to you. They rip your heart in three. Not in two. They, they go further. Looking at Agiha from the side as she puts her hands behind her head and starts thinking things over, I remember the withdrawal notice that I picked up last night. On the spur of the moment, I decided not to give it back and acted like I knew nothing about it. Is she really planning to drop out? Hmm. It somehow felt like I had picked some heavy piece of lost property. The two of us both made troubled faces as we walked. Murmur, 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 murmur. Quiet, strange commotion surrounded us. Hmm? Most of the other students around us on their way to school were looking in the same direction. Over there was a tall, slender, beautiful girl walking along. Oh, it's her. It was the girl I met in the garage. Everyone's looking at her with curiosity, but it seemed that she hadn't noticed that other people were looking at her. I was looking at her in the same way as everyone else, but Agiha took the way I was looking in the wrong way. I mean, even if I had high standards, finding her attractive isn't like, oh, other people are no longer attractive, but fair enough, I'll take the teasing. Mochizuki Amane-senpai-yo! 
super high school loser repeat student. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. That's great. Anyway, Amane Mochizuki. I'm gonna call her Momo. Super repeat student. Hmm. Is she that stupid? <laughs> I, oh, you can't say stuff like that. She doesn't look at the. Oh no, she's not. That's not. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think she's dumb, bud. Sorry, um, that's the first time it's ever done that, where it's like, she speaks, and then it moves on to the next page, so, my apologies for that. Cleverer than the teachers? I think the correct phrase is more clever. Not that it makes too much of a difference, but... Does your school really deal in such specialized fields? Hmm. I don't know if she's a genius or not, but she definitely seems like a pretty weird person. So is she like confused that she is walking to school in the morning because she thinks she like just sort of stays here? I don't like I'm not entirely certain what she means by that. Oh, she probably should have gone back and yeah, whatever. Then, abruptly, Super Repeat Student Senior Momo, or Amene Mochizuki, stopped walking and, looking at the, and looked at the sky. I, I like her name. Her name's not bad, don't get me wrong. Amene Mochizuki is pretty pretty, I guess. Oh, hey, look! I, I didn't turn off that. I should have turned that off. Anyway, um, but like, I, I like giving them a shorter name, if it's a name that I'm clearly gonna eventually have trouble remembering how to pronounce or might struggle with makes it easier on me so until we get a name maybe if it'll just like say Amine up on the top I'm gonna try to refer to her as Momo uh, when I see like the full name maybe we'll see everyone else mimicked her and looked up too a jet plane flying through the blue sky pulling his vapor trail along behind it Everyone soon realized it was a plane and quickly lost interest and started walking again. Dude, Bernoulli's principle is really cool. Like, I don't know why are you. Why are you like this? <laughs> why are you guys not, like, in appreciating. Impreciating, though? Appreciating, like, the coolness of, of planes. I'm not. I'm not with that. However, Momo kept on standing there, looking up at the plane flying high in the sky. When people came from behind and avoided her like she was in her way, in their way, she didn't pay any attention to them either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Kuri arrived just as our morning homeroom class finished. She also arrived at the end of the episode. What do you know about that? I'll catch you guys in uh, the next episode. My name has been the Jacket of Thirteen. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, I'm signing out. Catch you guys next time.